WV Uncommon Place. This podcast is a variety podcast that houses numerous series to cover mental health, empowerment, podcast framework, and various intimate theories to get to know the hosts. Along with occasional movies, reviews, and dives in pop culture with our event podcast episodes. The Uncommon Place digs into bringing guests on that stories don't fit the mold and are very different. WV stands for the great state of West Virginia and every quarter we cover something in West Virginia. Stacy and myself JR are your hosts so please come along for this venture to Uncommon Place. Welcome to West Virginia and Common Place. This is JR. I am back after a little bit of a hiatus. I'm on my way out of West Virginia. Going on to the bright sea of Florida. But that's enough about that. I have a special guest with me here. Her name is Dee Hurley. And I love her name because so many times I get guests on the show, I talk to her name, go for her name. It's just familiar. It is just calming and nice. So, Dee, the standard question that we ask on the show is who is Dee Hurley? So, before I even ask that, Give your introduction, and then could you go into that question for me if you don't mind? Okay, sure. Um, yes, I'm a survivor of domestic violence, and I learned how to do um, emotion code or energy healing work to help myself get through that. And now I, I use that, what I've learned, to help others, to other victims or anyone else who's experiencing emotional traumas or, or physical traumas as well. And I help them release um, emotional connections to those things so that they can heal that's like okay, you know like that shouting <laughs> yeah okay i don't like that so um let's go a little bit deeper um what led you to become involved with domestic abuse advocacy groups i had experienced some a lot of strange things when i went through the court system when i tried to leave my abusive marriage and i didn't realize i thought at the time like is this just happening to me but the more Okay. The more I started reaching out and finding out that there are other women who had similar experiences that I did. So I decided, you know what, we need to find a group and we need to come together because there's so many of us out there that are experiencing similar situations with family courts and domestic violence. So I actually um, helped form a, a small group and then we found other groups that were bigger than us so we started jumping into some of those groups and we all just help each other out and give each other advice and try to um yeah just hold each other's hands and support each other as we go through the process so that you don't feel like you're alone going through that okay and, and i like that because when someone has a personal experience and they grow from that triumph i mean from that that trauma not trauma when that trauma, it's kind of like you become a different person. You're different than what you were 10 days ago, 15 years ago. And the person that you are today, when you go into the future, you look back on it, and that's a book you can write. Now, let's go, in, let's go into this 11 and a half year narcissistic abusive uh, marriage. And how did this shape you in your journey towards energy healing and ad- advocacy? I know it's kind of like similar like what I just asked you, but... But one tighter to that, because narcissism is something that me and you both know because we're from the same age and about right that when we were younger, we were just taught that this was acceptable. Because we seen family members around us that did this to people. We you know, uncles and aunts or whoever. We seen this and we were taught and even by TV back sit off, taught us that was okay, oh, just say something real cunning or say something snide, and we'll move on about our business. But that is not the case. Yeah. Yep. There's a lot of programming there that we were raised with. And I think for me, it was a lot of, a lot of religious programming and I'm not pushing any bad things. You don't say anything bad about religion, but I think there's a lot of this be kind to everybody. And, you know, as a little girl growing up in, in a church with my family, we were taught to be just kind and respectful and do unto others as you want them to do to you. And you just expect that everyone out there is kind of doing the same thing. And you kind of get um, shocked whenever you get into a situation where people are not treating you that way. And if you're if you're not familiar with setting your own ba- boundaries or you're not comfortable with that, you know, it's something it's a skill that we need to be teaching people a lot younger. Not it's not something you need to be learning whenever you're already in the midst of the situation because that can cause some problems. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, I found myself in the middle of a situation and I couldn't figure out 
what to do and I kept trying everything like just making peace I'm a peacemaker and I just kept thinking well he's gonna change and this is gonna get better and it, it just felt like the more I tried the more I just it was like two steps forward one step back and uh, I read a book by Tina Swithin called How to Divorce a Narcissist a friend of mine told me to read it or divorcing a narcissist something like that I read her book and I thought how does she know me? Like, she knows my husband. Like, what in the world? Like, she's been in my house. Like, I couldn't believe that it was all just like playbook, the way that they treat you, the love bombing, and everything was just like by a book. And I was like, whoa, I finally started to understand what I was dealing with. And it helped me so much to navigate and to actually gave me a sense of peace to know what I was dealing with because I just couldn't put a name on it or a label. And so for some reason, when you find, find out what you're dealing with, it just helps. So then I started, you know, making some plans on how I could get out and get out safely so that my children and I were safe, you know, whenever I left the situation. And yeah, it's it was a whole process and it's not for the week because uh, it took some strength to get out and then to make sure I found some people that would help me out. And, and having those support networks is so crucial because if you don't, you know, uh, the statistics are like people leave five to seven, 10 times before they actually do leave. And sometimes they don't even make it out, you know, and I had tried to leave several times, but I finally got the strength to get out. And I look back and I'm like, wow, I've come a long way, but it, it was for a lot of um, insight that other people shared with me and then learning about the energy healing and learning to love yourself. Even in the midst of those situations, people can get so hard on themselves and just think, you know, I'm so stupid here, I'm in a situation. And a lot of times it's not the first time they've been there in those situations. For me, I had, I went through three different situations like this, three relationships that were exactly the same. Well, they just kept getting worse and worse. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, why am I attracting this? Like, why do I keep attracting people that are abusive? And I found out that it's very common once you get into that to just keep attracting the same type of person. You need to stop and you need to heal. You need to do the healing work before you start attracting the same person because you're putting out the same energies. And yeah, I've learned a lot along the way about that. <laughs> I don't know if you want to see <laughs> your thoughts. I don't know. I like that right there because you did something you did at Genesis on this episode because being courageous and one thing that people don't always talk about when they come up to show about the tribe or the community that they got help and after a point you got to a point where you knew that you needed help and that was something that when you said that right there I'm like oh my gosh you need to start your own podcast and just get out here and, and, and run around with this and I said having a YouTube special every week just doing this because so many people can't get out of that and you see so many um, men and women that fall into these categories and it's just like like yeah. i've seen it all, i've seen it happen to an aunt and then she the only way that she got away was because the husband died at an early age you know a foul there but still she was able to survive and then the trauma that comes from leaving is something that is hard to deal with too and i'm glad that you get a little expression on that you know talked about something that i want to get into i heard the words energy healing now did you elaborate on the energy healing techniques you used to heal from PTSD and a physical ailment that took place when you left the home and you had to strike it out on your own? And one thing that we don't always talk about is this, and I left this as an adult, but my um, the mother of my children, we broke up because I was with her for a good eight or nine years. You know, you get used to that. And being on your own, we're never, we don't really realize that we're going to be with someone until, and I'm not talking about financially, I'm talking about little things like that. Just the way they might look at you or just the attention that you get from there. When you lose that, you're a whole different person. It's like a whole side of you just gone. So could you please go in and let us know about how your energy uh, healing techniques help you um, through all this? Yeah, and you made me think of some other things. Yeah, it, it becomes your comfort zone after a while. And you don't even know how to behave sometimes whenever you get out of that situation because you get so used to walking on eggshells that it continually affects every relationship that you have afterwards if you don't stop and do the inner healing work. And part of that is loving yourself and forgiving yourself for getting in a situation in the first place. Because we tend to be so good at beating ourselves up. We're the best at beating ourselves up, but we'll give the same kind of 
you know, advice to a friend who might be saying, you know what, don't be so hard on yourself. You did the best you could with what you had, but for some reason we don't take it to ourselves sometimes and we need to be that way. We need to do more of the self-love and self-care because if you do, you're not going to tolerate people treating you that way. It won't be okay. It won't be acceptable. And, you know, sometimes we're, you know, when I was growing up, they were like, oh, loving yourself, that's vain. No, it's not. You really do need to love yourself to love others. And there is a Bible scripture about that too. If people think that's not christian or something you can look it up you know love yourself as you you know love the lord your god as yourself i think that is what the scripture is um but yeah we have to love ourselves and the same friend who sent me that book also sent me a book about um the energy healing and it was called the emotion code by dr bradley nelson you can look it up now he has the body code and i started learning that a lot of the emotional traumas i'd carried from childhood they were they were causing me to make decisions that weren't the safest for me because I had grown up in a situation where that was my comfort zone. So I tended to go towards it and navigate towards those relationships in my adult life. And I had to go all the way back and release traumas and emotions that I had picked up from childhood. And I didn't know that, but I'm, I had to learn that along the way. So releasing those emotions and you use a form of... Um, like muscle testing. So I use a pendulum, but everybody's different. You can use your hand also and like kinesiology or muscle testing and start asking your body if there's a trapped emotion that you would like to release. And then once you get a yes, then you just safely say, you know what, I'm going to release this emotion. And you just go layer by layer, releasing these emotions and these traumas until you start feeling a little more comfortable. It's a process. It's not overnight, but you'll notice it once you start releasing them everything is energy everything carries a vibration every single thing is not woo woo it actually is science they have um, done studies where they can measure the frequencies of the emotions of love and every other frequency and shame is the lowest on the frequency scale so when somebody is vibrating at this emotion of shame they're going to start attracting more shame and more of that low vibration frequency to them because um uh, that's what we do. We put out this energy field in like a magnet. We're going to bring that back to us. So we learn to start focusing on things that are more positive, like the law of attraction. Now all this stuff, it opened up a whole new world for me when I started going through this. And I'm like, wow, my life has changed so drastically in the last six years since I left that relationship and where I am now. I, now I'm happily married. I, I didn't even think I'd ever put those two words together for me in my life because I've been going down a wrong track. But now I'm, I'm happily married, attracted a very loving man after doing the energy healing work and working on myself and abundance because, you know, even money is a frequency. It opens up the doors for all kinds of things once you start doing the healing work and releasing the negative energies from our body. And it's not all just, it's not just that it affects our emotions. It also can affect us physically. So Dr. Bradley goes into detail in his book and I have so many testimonials. Somebody who will come to me with just some kind of pain in their body and we'll find out it's related to some kind of emotional trauma. And we're like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, this started hurting when I had that car accident, but I didn't link it together, you know, because there was some shock that they didn't release from their body and from that yeah. Or, you know, a divorce, you know, oh, this did start happening at the same point I went through this divorce, you know, some of the most painful things we go through with divorce, career, um, some kind of um, shock to the system, like an accident or a death in the family, those all have emotions connected. So once you start releasing the emotions, a lot of times the physical symptoms will disappear as well. Oh, it's been a fun journey. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that because people learning this or not knowing this, this is something that revolutionary. I mean, even though, like you said, it's in books, to a certain degree, not everybody, everybody wants a quick convenience that I get a podcast and get a quick videos and things like that. So I thank you for that. And you got something interesting. This energy healing device. Oh, yeah. I'd like you to talk about. <laughs> I'd like you to jump into that real quick. Let the audience know about it because you're doing things with it and people need to know Yes, it's called a bio, well, it's an AO scanner, but it's a bioresonance feedback scanner. 
And I learned about this about three years ago and started using this with my clients as well when I'm working with them because some people want something a little more tangible and it actually will scan your body and give you a printout. You get an email and it'll show you what is out of balance in your body. And it can go all the way from like your chakras to some imbalance in the structure or organs or um, maybe there's a virus or a bacteria or parasites showing up. It's incredible. It's It does the whole gamut. And there's different scans on there. Um, this thing's fascinating. It's actually been used by NASA with their astronauts to keep them healthy in space. It's kind of like making a phone call. It's weird to try to describe it, but it's kind of like making a phone call. You don't see the frequencies, but you know it's going to go to that target whenever you put the right numbers in and call a person. Same kind of concept. You're going to put somebody's profile in the system, and then it knows who to target when you scan them. So you can scan them remotely. They don't even have to be in the same room with you. So, yeah. Once you get the profile made, it knows who they are. It picks up their energy pattern of this person, and it can scan them anywhere in the world. And we also do one where you can send a voice clip in, so it's kind of like a lie detector. You speak for 12 seconds and it picks up the patterns in your voice and it will tell you what's going on energetically in your body just with your voice clip. That, yeah, the technology has been around a long time, but it used to be like a huge machine and you'd have to drive there to do it. But now they have it down to where you can download it like an app on your phone, put your own information in there and scan yourself and keep yourself at energetic balance and then just send yourself optimized frequencies that are custom designed for you. And so, and I can see how the, I can see how the uh, compliments energy healing modalities. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It's <laughs> amazing. Now let's go into your teaching and your advocacy because that's one thing there. Can you share um, insight into how you teach others heal and raise their frequency using energy healing? Right yeah, usually I talk to them about the patterns, thought patterns, and beliefs, and how we got ourselves in those situations in the first place. And I'm not saying that it's, it's the, I'm not victim blaming. I'm not saying it's their fault that they're in that situation. There's all kinds of reasons we can find ourselves in those situations. And I try to work with people one-on-one -on -one from some of the groups. We work out one-on-one -on -one and we talk about how we can heal, heal whatever it is that causes us to get in a situation in the first place. And that's usually just starting with doing like an emotion code session or bioresonance feedback scan on them and sending them some frequencies to help them. It has been shown to help people with PTSD. And that's what I used to help the PTSD that I had experienced. And it's just a wonderful to see the changes in people when they start and then where they get to <laughs> later on down the road. <laughs> and, um, yeah, sorry. My dog wanted to join the show. <laughs> she gets free. Uh, <laughs> I scan my Shih Tzus. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, they're all there to do all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. These frequencies too. They need it too. <laughs> Okay. Now, there's a part of the show that we do that's vintage called Shameless Plug. So, D Harley, what I need you to do real quick is do a shameless plug and let everyone know where they can meet and reach you across the internet and how they can get in touch with you to get your services and to become part of your ecosystem. Okay. Well, I'm on lighthouseenergyhealing.com. If you look me up online there, and I'm on Instagram and TikTok and LinkedIn. I I believe it's under D Hurley on um, Instagram and on TikTok. But lighthouseenergyhealing.com will usually bring up all my social media sites. Okay. Now, there's a portion of the show where I pay homage to a news magazine called 2020. On Fridays in my youth growing up, we would watch uh, everything that came on TGI Fridays from uh, Family Matters, Step by Step. And then at 10 o'clock, John Stossel with the comedic parts of the show Diane Sawyer were probably the best interviewing skills of anyone. There was all the trusty, late great Marvel Walters. And when Marvel Walters did on that show around 1049, 1050, she gave you a story or gave you an interview that made you question what you were thinking, even at seven or eight years old. And if it was really strong, the news cast would let her roll over until 11 or 5. It was something fairly dull, which anything she did was still great. It cut off at 11. So, D. Hurley, it's time for your 2020 questions. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> I think so. I mean, you know, 
here, here's something that uh, we do. Uh, one curse effect is a word that we all use, and that word is a gift and a curse. It's a double-edged blade that stabs us at both ends because no matter what we think is right, it hurts us every time it touches us. Now, for you to move forward, you had to do a lot of soul searching and a lot of healing, correct? So, if you had the technology or we had the power to we had the mental capacity to, to make time go back in time, what would you say to your former self to the new person you are today? Hmm. I would definitely say listen to your gut, listen to your heart. Do not ignore it. And yeah, trust yourself. You're a lot stronger than you think you are. Okay. Now here goes our next question. This is goes along with that. Now this one goes into this wish. Well, it's the worst thing for me is that gut feeling you're talking about. And I in a in it touching still, I'm thirty eight years old now. Took into my mid twenties for me to really get a good feel for it. When did it make the wish and come knocking on your back door and run real fast to the front door? And you open the door for it. <laughs> Probably, um, you know, the, some of it started when I was pregnant with my last daughter. Um, when I was pregnant with her, I started having these feelings about things that I should avoid eating when I was pregnant with her. And then after she was born, I found out she was allergic to those certain items that I stopped eating. And I, and I thought, wow, I was listening to something internal. And it turned out to be right. And I really started listening a lot more after she was born. Okay. I like that. The name of the Whitman came after the, the last baby. Now, there's this uh, scene where we always talk about our heart strings. We play on those. When we get into relationships, relationships are like, a, uh, are like the structure of a book that we read. You have a rise in action, you have a, a climax, and you have a falling action. And sometimes in these, we get lessons learned, I call mistakes. Um, and then we have, um, what I call something to a deeper degree. They're not lessons, they're hardships. And those hardships are the things that define us and they give us the definition of our face in older age or the little line that our face, because we did something wrong or we were involved with something that wasn't supposed to be us. So D, if you wouldn't mind telling us what put a strand of, uh, age when you during that 11 and a half year abusive relationship. I think when I saw my son, uh, when his dad was hurting him, when I saw him go at him in a fit of rage one day, um, that was the hardest part of the whole 11 and a half years. And that was actually the moment that I said, if I don't get out for me, I'm doing it for my kids. That was the hardest thing I ever have witnessed. And cool. it changed me for good. I, I Right then I was determined the next time I leave, whatever I did, I was like, I was making plans. I was like, when I get out, I'm not ever coming back. That's it. It was the last straw. And I never went back after I did leave after that. And I appreciate that. And that's what gives you your tenacity. People need more of that. It's a skill that we're not taught. It's something that will attribute to us when some trauma happens to us. So thank you for that. That's another gem out right here. Neil, I need you to define something for me. Optimal health in the context of energy and frequency. Wait, what was that again? Can you define optimal health in the context of energy and frequency? Like well, optimal? Okay. I think whenever you feel like everything's good and you're feeling positive, that's when you know you pretty much reach your optimal health. I mean, it shows up whenever we do our scans, our energy healing scans. It'll show, you know, green for balance and red for not balance. <laughs> and a lot of times I'll just keep scanning until my everything's all green in there. And I'm like, yep, I'm feeling really good. <laughs> everything's working good and I'm sleeping well and I'm, my mind's sharper. And, you know, when everything's together um, synergistically, yeah. That feels great for me. <laughs> okay, and now the next question, this is a, a social media question. And this is something hard because you and I have a hard time dealing with this sometimes because me and you come from a generation where we didn't have cameras in front of our face. A Polaroid camera took a picture or a 35 millimeter, something took our picture and then they had to get 
made or if we had a VHS, it was somebody had over the month back in the day. And then when we were adults, we had cameras, but it was nothing like what goes on today. So there's a hard pressure that you and I go through that we don't even think about. And that's being content creators. The minute we turned on, and I, and I use TikTok as the best of me, the minute we turned on those kids, and we can put out a facade or we can put out who we truly are. What made you decide to not put out a facade? Because you could have put a facade out and been out here and selling all kinds of stuff and doing whatever you wanted. What made you want to be your authentic self in front of a camera? Tons of people are going to see you across the world. Well, I thought it, it was very important to get a message across about domestic violence and that you can survive and that you can get out because there was a me <laughs> 20 years ago who thought I was all alone in all of this. And, and I have two girls and I really want the world to be a different place for them as they get older. Okay. So here's the most hard hitting question. This is the Barbara Walters question. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Now, this doesn't make this stuff I'd like you to do with your two daughters. You can do it with your son too, but mainly your daughter. Because the thing that bothered me as a male in this world, and when I was courting or out dating someone about to be married in October, um, I had to do something with this generation or with the women in my generation that I didn't have, I hope my father didn't have to do. I had to really think hard about how she was brought up. I had to see the thing. So if you wouldn't mind, doing this for your daughters and you can do this for your sons you might need this. I need you to pin them this letter. And this letter in the context will be whatever you want them to know about the worth of a woman. And we're not basing this on gender, but I'm just saying a woman. The worth of a person, I'll say it that way. The worth of a person and the value that that person exudes. And that sometimes that value gets tarnished because of preoccupation of pleasing someone else. Yeah. And the reason that, that a, a child needs this letter is because technology has pushed us in a realm where you're taught to please, you're taught to creation, you're telling them to dance and do this and that, act happy, be sad, not anyone knowing. Or if you emote these emotions, we want you to be emo, we, should, we want you to be as dark as you can with the emotion. They want to put on a facade. Mm -hmm. And we're from that last generation that if there, that a simple letter or if it's an email or anything, something that has your personal touch to it, so when they get older, they can foster ideas and they can remember what they learned from their mom, the first of the year, and everything like that. Can you do that for them? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now, let me ask you this, because this is the Barbara Walters part of it. Give me an excerpt of something that would be in that light. I would definitely tell them to love themselves no matter what, and look inside for the answers you're not going to find all the answers outside of you you need everything is inside of us it really is okay now to finish up this show because we do a great show we try to keep everything nice so that everybody can be able to meet you at the start door and get involved to you and i hope that we were able to get enough knowledge out there so when there's another take on this that goes over to tiktok coach people you're going to get a double take of this um and you definitely have to make sure you listen to uh, this episode, which you will hear it on TikTok. I'll put it up there. But please leave us with a strong message. And this is the message I'd like you to leave. Any message you want. But what was the message that you would leave someone if you were doing a TED talk right now? You had the audience in front of you. I see last time I was, oh, we'll just use California, for example. <laughs> um, you know, we'll use Cal State. That's the college I like out there. You're at Cal State and you're giving a TED talk. You're talking about how you broke the shackles, you broke the chains. I'm not saying it was anything generational to remote that happened in your past, but sometimes things are generational. What would you tell an audience? The most important thing you learned through the struggle and when you were able to go into retrospect. Well, I think that our bodies are fascinating and they're still learning things about our bodies every single day in medicine and science. And the most incredible thing I learned is that our bodies do have the capacity to heal themselves or the placebo effect wouldn't be a thing. So we are so powerful beyond what we can imagine. And we need to start opening our eyes to that and walking in that. That's our truth. And that's where we're going to find our power. 
And I like that. Now, B, the last thing that we do on the show, we give a special shout out to the people that we haven't given our, our flowers to. Because behind everybody, there's a great person. I lost my father in 1994. And I lived in his shadow. He was, a, he was a great man from what I was told and the negative things I was told about him. I use those two to form who I am today. I always make sure I get to the flower. My mother, she is great, just raised me through. We had a good time when we were growing up. She brings me into the digital age. <laughs> Nobody knew that, she that we were going to end up like we are now. So who would you like to give a shout out to? And even if you miss some people, let's get some main people out there that have helped shape and mold who you are. Uh, yeah, I think my mom. <laughs> I hear her voice a lot. <laughs> some of it comes from fear, but I have to remind myself from where she's come from, too. And yeah, my mom's been great. She's, I've always looked up to her. She was an entrepreneur. Before that was even cool when I was a kid, you know, <laughs> I was I, so strong. She's amazing. I want to be like her. I actually repeated a lot of her mistakes too because of it, but I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And on that note, I am JR. This is the early. We are signing off from West Virginia College, but one thing I forgot to do is the testimony. So, D. Hurley, here goes the testimony. I'm sorry about that, Adi. I met you in this phone call podcast thing that we're doing today. Had a bright smile from the moment I talked to you and you taught me some things about rising and striving. And you put tenacity in time. That. Those are things that are not built unless you go through a trauma. Because we're all taught to be tough and have a little finesse to us. But the finesse, when you try to finesse too long, it just messes you up. Someone tried to finesse you and you didn't allow it to happen very long. It happened for a little bit of time, but then you realize that, hey, I'm D. Hurley. I'm not to be messed with. I have children. I am a role model. And that is the hardest thing for us to, to have in, in, a, in a conception is that we are role models to our children, to their friends, to all these people. And you are exemplary in that. So I want you to do something. I don't have to go do right now. When you look in the mirror, you can say, I'm a role model. You don't have to be like Carl Barkley and say, I'm not. And that is the hardest thing to do as a person. Beyond all these titles and all this other stuff, you have being a role model is the hardest thing to do in this time frame because of the moral and morality are not the way they were when we were brought up here. They're all brought up in this world that had a quick convenience, a high buy, get out the way, and you're not doing that. You're like, hey, we're here. Let's go through this emotional boy. Let's go on this journey through this emotional sea, and let's see what we can do to persevere. That is my testimony to you. From the moment that I met you, from the moment here, everything you said, I can feel a strong energy from you. And that's why I contacted you early on, because I do my research. I don't understand you on the set for no reason. That's one thing I want to put out there. <laughs> and it was something about you. We started off in November and it carried all the way to January now to bring you on the set. And that's because I had to go through and dig and do harder research and make sure I knew that who you were because I did our research. But I had to get all the character balance and stuff like that. TikTok videos, everything stuff. Pop up everywhere. So I want to give you that, that you are an amazing person. And people don't get that a lot, even though I'm a complete stranger. And being amazing has its baggage because sometimes that glass is only halfway full and i know you know how to deal with things and you know how to structure things to relax your body to take care of yourself so i don't even have to go into detail with that and that is something that other people don't have so please whatever you do in the world kissing you what you do be that light for people that are not afraid but are bashful in the sense of not thinking they have a voice yeah. and that is the major problem in society that it takes people like you, the advocacy, um, the all around thinking, not thinking square. Yeah. So your mom and your and your, and your toolage and everything that brought you up in life, you didn't stay thinking on like a square. And that's one thing that no one can ever take away from you. So on that note, we are signing off. Um, we can say goodbye to everybody. Say bye everybody. Bye everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Please follow WV Uncommonplace on Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, TikTok where we have some great content, Facebook, LinkedIn, hit up the merch store at onecommonplace.square.site, join the email list from the website, and rate, subscribe, and give feedback from your favorite podcatcher. And lastly thanks for listening and tune into the next episode.